Glacier National Park is a land of breathtaking grandeur. One of Glacier's most distinguishing attributes is the presence of the legendary grizzly bear. Here, this living symbol of wilderness finds one of its last refuges in the continental United States. In an effort to better understand the grizzlies living in and around the park, United States Geological Survey researcher Kate Kendall is preparing to carry out a groundbreaking population study. There aren't many places in the southern 48 states that still are very much like they were before Europeans came to North America. And grizzly bears ranged through almost all of North America from the Arctic down into Mexico. They now are reduced to 1% of their former range south of Canada. From all indications, this ecosystem has the densest population of grizzly bears in the lower 48 states. And because it's the strongest population, that is one of the reasons why it's really important to manage this population responsibly, um, because it's our best shot at, at having bears in the long term. Uh, Kate's study is extremely important to us as managers in that by having a baseline population it gives us some way to measure both the success of our operations and also the failures. Having this knowledge of grizzly bears enables us to do management actions that are more effective and that is what are the types of safeguards that we can put in place to make sure that when people visit these areas they are visiting in such a manner that has the least a possible impact on these bears and the least possible potential for having uh, conflicts with bears. When I heard um, that it was possible to identify bears with hair, it was, it was a perfect fit and it was the right time to propose a project um, using those non-invasive techniques to get at this information that we really needed. The beauty of, of the genetic techniques is that it only requires a couple of hairs, but you can get a really reliable genotype that identifies the species, sex, and individual identity of the bear just based on those few hairs that you were able to collect. This project will be not only the first solid population estimate for Glacier National Park, but it will also be the largest application of this new hair snaring DNA based population inventory um, ever done. The survey will cover over two million acres and be the first to study grizzlies on an ecosystem wide scale. Kate and a group of workers will spend the next three summers constructing over a thousand traps throughout this untamed land, traversing some of the nation's roughest and most remote terrain in the process. Our hair traps are pretty low tech. They're 80 feet of barbed wire. We staple it around several trees and make a little kind of corral out of it. And the idea is that it's low enough that bears can't go under it or over it without scraping against it and hopefully snagging some hair. So this is our famous scent lure. It's um, something we brew up ourselves. We uh, put uh, fish, whole fish, in a 55-gallon drum and put it in a warm room and leave it for a couple of months. And the liquid that's produced is mixed with aged cattle blood. But it's the last thing we do before we, uh, when we set up a site because you don't want to stick around once you open up this bottle because it really reeks. Captured by a remote camera, these images illustrate just how enticing bears find the study's scent lures to be. Any doubt Kate has about her trapping methodology evaporates with her first glimpse of captured grizzly hares. Ooh, 
Ooh. Two I think samples here. Yeah. This one, I think it's got some follicles on it. I think that's looking really good. All the hairs from each barb go into a separate envelope and they're they're cataloged in and we're uh, going to take these hair samples and, and we'll send them to the lab at the University of Idaho for genetic analysis. So my laboratory here at the University of Idaho um, is called the Laboratory for Ecological and Conservation Genetics. And one of the reasons why it has this name is because we work on samples from natural populations and then we want to get the DNA from these samples and use genetics to answer questions about the ecology, biology, and um, things that are important for conservation and management of these species. Our next step is to extract the DNA and then we go through and we call what we call the genotype and that essentially becomes the DNA fingerprint, the unique genetic identifier that we identify each bear with. The effectiveness of the trapping method and the sheer number of samples collected surpass even Kate's expectations. She uses the wealth of data obtained over the course of study to develop the first ever grizzly population model for Glacier National Park. This pretty much confirms uh, what we suspected, that we had a higher density of, of bears in the park where they have more protections and um, but we did find a fair number in the whitefish range, which is encouraging. Um, interesting that we had lower densities in, in this uh, area of lower elevation. We, we found a lot of bears. Prior to this study, the only estimate we had for grizzly bear numbers in the park was an estimate of 200 that was made about 30 years ago uh, based on sightings of bears. Um, this project has demonstrated that we have at least 300, if not 400, grizzly bears in this area. This study has shown that grizzlies are thriving in Glacier. In fact, we now know the park is one of the bear's greatest inland refuges in North America. But as human activity intensifies in and around Glacier, the bears will continue to face numerous threats to their survival. I think they're worth it. They, they have been relegated to a very small area and um, I personally think we should be generous enough um, as a people to maintain grizzly bears and all the other species um, that naturally occur here for the good of, of the ecosystem and to maintain the spirit of this beautiful land.